We're eating foods that aren't supposed to cause us to gain weight, and yet we're getting more and more obese. 30% of this nation is obese, morbidly obese. We're not talking obese. We're talking morbidly obese, which is, you know, 50 to 75 pounds over where they should be. Welcome, friends. You are listening to Dr. Todd Frisch. He is my guest today, and I am so excited to have him back on the show if you missed his first interview, you can go back to episodes 23 and 24 and you will catch it. It is just so chock full of information that you will probably want to take some notes on. So again, for today, grab your notebook too and you might wanna take some notes as well. But let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about Dr. Frisch. Dr. Todd Frisch is the founder and technical advisor for the wellness company Shape Reclaimed. He is a teacher, speaker, and author of the book, WTF, Why the Face? A Practical Guide to Understanding Health and Personality Through Facial Diagnosis. Dr. Todd specializes in restorative medicine, nutrition, homeopathy, kinesiology, acupuncture, iridology, traditional Chinese medicine, and facial diagnosis. After 37 years in private practice as a chiropractor, Dr. Todd continues his mission to transform healthcare one person at a time by teaching and mentoring practitioners. Guys, you are in for such a treat because Dr. Todd is one of my very favorite people in the whole world and he is a wealth of information. He is as real as they come and I just know that you will enjoy hearing from him. So grab a mug of tea and your notebook or pop those earbuds in and go for a walk because this is a much longer episode than normal, but I know you won't want to miss a second of it. All right, let's get started. Are you a Christian woman over 40 who is struggling with consistently low energy and fatigue? Are you tired of trying to navigate the ever-changing health chatter all around you? And do you wish there was a simple solution to just feeling good? Boy, do I see you and I hear you. Hi, I'm Michelle, and as a holistic health coach and fellow midlifer, I have realized the answer to our whole health concerns isn't in the online search bar, those fad diets, and endless exhausting workouts. Listen, beautiful mama, as the heartbeat of your home, you have spent your life caring for others well. So now is the time to take good care of yourself, get back your energy, and reclaim your entire health during this season. So if you are ready to stop striving and start thriving as your healthiest whole self, then you are in the right place. Grab your iced coffee, a notebook and pen, and let's treasure your wellness. Okay, well, hello, Dr. Todd. It is such an honor. I'm so happy to have you back on the show. Once again, our last interview was so much fun, and you are such a wealth of information. Thank you. The only problem with the last interview is it ended. It was such a good, such a good time. So I, much I was fun. Things that I'm having that we're having a good time doing. So it was great. Such a pleasure. So much fun. Yes, I loved it. And for those of you who are listening, if you missed our last interview, you can go back to episodes 23 and 24 and catch it. So, uh, Dr. Todd, you founded Shape roughly around 12 years ago. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's going to be 13 years this March. So, okay. It's, a, it's, a, Wonderful. it's, now, a, it's now a teenager. So, <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And you founded it originally as a weight loss program, but you quickly discovered the whole health, the whole yeah. body benefits yeah. of following an anti inflammatory lifestyle, really. Yeah, it was It was built as a weight loss program because my wife, gained some weight with menopause and kind of lost her <laughs> I'll leave it I'll leave that what she lost uh, to the to the ethers but um I, I I never liked weight loss um programs I always thought they were seedy and just wrong and and now it's my wife and so I, I built shape on two premises one all diets fail because they do and number two it can't be just metabolic it's got to be something different so when with my study um and what I went through in trying to understand why all diets failed, I came to the conclusion it had to do with the brain and the brain getting a message that it's starving. Uh, and so I built this program with the idea the missing link was, was the brain. And uh, it just became amazing because even though it started as weight loss, all of a sudden 
it, was, it became an anti-inflammatory program. It, it, it strengthened the immune system. It was a mild detox with a side effect of weight loss. It was such an exciting thing to see that transformation of something I had disdain for, weight loss programs, to something that became a national company. So it, it's, uh, I say it's a God thing, but I love it. <laughs> it, it was great. Yeah, absolutely. It has changed countless lives and it's continuing to change countless lives. And it truly is an incredible mind, body, soul, spirit benefit. Wouldn't you yeah. agree to that? It is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they have to be blended. You know, we can't separate them. That's a problem with medicine. We separate stuff. Yes, you're absolutely right. Conventional medicine looks at the the pain point, right? You're having headaches. Right. Let's look at your brain, your head, your brain, what's going yeah. on there. And let's not look at nutrition. Let's, let's not look at your gut, you know? Yeah. You know, I had, I had a paradigm shift. You know, we're taught as physicians, uh, I was taught as a physician to ask what's wrong. But you and I both know you have people come to clients, in my, my case, patients came to me. I knew something was wrong. They knew something was wrong. And yet every test was textbook, midline, normal. And it isn't a lack of Prozac, you know, I mean, <laughs> that isn't the answer to this, to this problem. So I had this paradigm shift and began to look at asking what's not right instead of asking what's wrong. And I came to the conclusion, you got to be two thirds sick before medicine sees what's wrong. And that opened up this amazing door of uh, possibilities for all of my patients. And it, 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 that, that one single thought made me a profoundly better doctor. That was, it was quite exciting. Yeah, absolutely. You are absolutely right, too, about that um, comment about you have to be two thirds sick before anybody recognizes in conventional right. medicine that something is wrong. And mm -hmm. I love that. Ask, like, what's not right instead of what's wrong. And I think the latest statistic shows that uh, maybe only 12 percent of Americans are metabolically healthy, something around there. And yep. really that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so with so many serious medical conditions that we have around us, like diabetes, for example, diabetes is on the rise at an Absolutely. alarming rate. Can you explain even just explain how serious inflammation can be to the body as a whole? Yeah. And I think, you know, it's a buzzword in medicine right now. It's the, it's the new kid on the block. Everybody's into uh, inflammation and I, I get that, but the first thing you have to understand is it's a proper thing. Uh, I mean, inflammation, uh, it removes damaged cells. Uh, it literally eliminates toxins. Uh, it fights any kind of invading microorganisms and it begins a repairing process. So inflammation is not bad. It's when it gets out of control that it becomes bad. And that's, and that's what our American standard American diet said, which is such an interesting, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, first letters, uh, um, you know, it, it's created a pro-inflammatory condition. And now we get this cascade of, uh, of inflammation. And, you know, big pharma has forever gone after things to try to help inflammation started with aspirin, you know, back in the thirties and to today with what they're trying to do. And, and, you know, I get that, but again, they're that, they're that um, mentality of let's fix what's screaming instead of asking, why is it screaming? You know, we, we need to understand the process behind that. So looking at inflammation in a more open way, and there's a bunch of technical terms, and you know, I'm not going to get into NF kappa B and, and prostaglandins and that kind of stuff because it's not something the audience wants to hear, but there's there's a there's a process, and it's not an automatic process. And this is the interesting thing. This is a very well orchestrated thing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk I, I one of my passions in teaching is to take very difficult things and make the public understand. Uh, and, you know, there's an entity called inflammasomes. Pretty much nobody's ever heard of these things. But what happens is we have cells that are, are involved in uh, inflammation that build these things called inflammasomes. They're quickly built and quickly disassembled. It's, it's, it's in the cellular activity. And they have to be... Um, they, the inflammatory process that has to be triggered and there's something that has to um, send a message to signal it's time for inflammation. And I put these into two categories. We have what I call stranger signals and we have danger signals. Now the stranger signals um, that, that trigger the onset of an inflammatory cascade 
Uh, the Stranger Things are like intestinal parasites, uh, viruses, bacteria, fungal infections. They're, they're strangers to our body, and they signal this inflammatory response. And then there's the danger signals. And of course, these are uh, like an injury. Uh, you you fall off your motorcycle, get all scraped up. You want inflammation to occur because otherwise you're going to die. Uh, you're going to bleed to death from de you know from not being able to respond from an inflammatory standpoint. And then there are there are proteins involved in these dangers. And these are the beta amyloids. And this is where it gets into Alzheimer's. These are the things that they they're tying to all these. Um, brain um, degenerative entities, these, these these toxic proteins, these beta amyloids. There's also uh, in the in the danger category the the crystal depositions. This is um, uh, the uric acid buildup, gout basically, and we get this inflammatory. Anybody's ever had gout? I, I had an episode, had a number of episodes of gout. Don't know what that's all about. I don't like it, but man, it is really painful. And you'll take anything to get out of this pain. It's so violent. That's why medicine is always going after that. But then the the last danger signal is diet, and it starts with overnutrition. This country is overfed and undernourished. It, it's that simple. We are given foods that fill our gut, but don't trigger a satiety mechanism. You know, it's these, these diet foods. Obesity, you can take the increase in the use of diet foods, things with artificial sugars, and obesity, and the, the lines go identical. They parallel up. We're eating foods that aren't supposed to cause us to gain weight, and yet we're getting more and more obese. 30% of this nation is obese, morbidly obese. We're not talking obese. We're talking morbidly obese, which is, you know, 50 to 75 pounds over where they should be. So it's overnutrition. Um, it's, it's of course, the diabetes is, is part of it. Um, from an inflammation standpoint, they're, they're, they're calling Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes because one of the uh, one of the major functions of insulin is to keep glucose out of the brain because glucose is a neurotoxin. It's no, what is the number one cause of blindness in America today? It's diabetes right. because the high blood sugar in the brain destroys that sensitive nerve tissue. Well, if it destroys your eyes, do you think it could destroy anything else in the brain? Well, of course it can. <laughs> and, and so it's an interesting thing. Trans fats are another one from a dietary standpoint. They, they are so pro inflammatory, and these are man made things. Um, and it, it makes me crazy when meat gets slammed that it's bad, and it's inflammatory. No, it's not if you eat it correctly and don't combine it with certain things. I mean, it's a, you know, God put certain things on our earth to eat. You know, when people ask me what should I eat, I, I have a classic line. I said, eat only things that can spoil and rot and eat them before they do. That's that's the simple thing, you know. When when you have a hostess Twinkie that's seven years old and it's still squishy and yellow and the cellophane is breaking down. We got a problem, you know, right. <laughs> it, that, that's not probably a healthy thing to put into your body because it's seven years old and it's still yellow and squishy. and There's no mold on it. How can that be? If you had an apple at <laughs> seven years old, well, it'd be decomposed and be gone. That's good. You can spoil it around, eat it before it does. The other one is um, something I refer to as food shock. This is where we get into the food sensitivities. You know, I'm I'm hitting my seventh, seventh inning stretch here in my life. I'm about to turn 70, which is strange because <laughs> I just never saw that coming. Um, but, you know, nobody had food sensitivities when I was a kid. Nobody had gluten sensitivities. None of this stuff exists. Once in a while you hear about some kid in a bubble in New York or whatever, but what's what's going on? Well, it all starts with this inflammatory reaction that creates now an issue with your adrenal glands. Now your adrenals don't react, they overreact. That's a histamine response. And all of a sudden we have this, this cascade of uh, symptoms that are all triggered by an inflammatory reaction from food shock, eating foods that are, are, aren't correct for us. We, we react to things. And it's always the protein in food that we're reacting to. Gladen is the protein in wheat. And that's the thing you can measure gladen antibodies and all that kind of stuff. So well, that was a long answer for a short question, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Um, and you're right. I, I really am so glad you brought up how Alzheimer's is now being called type three diabetes, because that's yeah. what I wanted to talk to you about, because inflammation and how it affects our brain, it's not really talked about as much, right? As, as much as it should be often until it's too late, or at least that's what the conventional medical model has us well, but, um, yeah, understand. They're spending, they're spending all their energy on making a drug to help it. Well, this is not a, 
It's not a deficiency entity when it comes to medications. You know, depression is not a deficiency in Prozac or Effexor. You know, it's there's a lot involved in brain chemistry with this thing. And that's why I built shape with the idea it's a problem with the brain. And, you know, back to this inflammasome, which, again, no one's ever heard of. But um, the, the purpose of these inflammasomes is to build what are called cytokines. Um, and these cytokines are are supposed to be there. Again, this is how the body responds to it. But if they get out of control, and this is your interleukins and you know, all this kind of stuff that goes on, uh, what happens, it gets out of control, is obesity, insulin resistance, fatty liver. Non-alcoholic fatty liver is the number one liver disease in children. Non-alcoholic fatty liver. How did that, Does anybody ask why that happened? Uh, gout, obviously. No. Alzheimer's, autoimmune. I mean... I saw Hash when I started in practice 40 plus years ago, I saw Hashimoto's thyroiditis, autoimmune thyroid condition, maybe twice a year. Uh, at the end of my career, uh, every other thyroid patient was a Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So an inflammation of the thyroid, an autoimmune, your body's attacking itself. Why? Somebody's got to step back and ask the why question. It's stuff we've done to our environment, to our food chain, um, what we're trying to do to our immune system by enhancing it with vaccines. Oh, did I dare say that word? Um, you know, in this culture today, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it's it's it saddens me to to realize uh, how foolish we've become and weakened our immune system through an attempt to help it. Um, and there's a lot of data to support. You can't find it because it's it's squashed. But the overuse of vaccines has created the epidemic in autoimmune conditions. Yeah. Body's attacking itself. Absolutely. Well, there's a reason why we have over 100 autoimmune conditions now. Yeah, it's unreal. And again, I saw I saw two a year in 1981, uh, in the 80s. And at the end... And I was very thorough and way before it became popular to be thorough in investigating uh, thyroid function. Some of the tests didn't even exist. Uh, uh, thyroid peroxidase, thyroid antibodies, uh, reverse T3, those, these tests didn't even exist when I started in practice. And as we evolved in our trying to understand, we developed a better understanding of what needed to be, what needed to be done. Well, I really want to take a second to talk about the Alzheimer's, the dementia, conversation right. because it's really very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we lost my mother-in-law to Alzheimer's at a very, very young age. And I know that you talk about hope. There is so much hope that mm. you share. And I'm a big believer in sharing hope as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's always hope. There's always so much we can do to help support our body and our brain. You know, it's, it's not our lot in life to be struggling the way of so many people are, and it's just getting worse. So would you just take a few minutes and just give some encouragement to our listeners that may be struggling with their memory or um, any kind of struggle that they're having with uh, brain fog or cognitive decline? You know, sadly, I think more people have died from the word cancer than have ever died from the disease. Because when that word is spoken into someone's life, they put an equal sign between cancer and death. And Alzheimer's is really truly scarier than cancer because the end result of cancer is you're going to die. The problem with Alzheimer's is you're going to be alive, but you don't even have, um, you're not aware of the fact that you are who you are. And it, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible condition. But again, let's step back and ask what happened that allowed that to, to happen. I remember years ago that people would say, well, eat fish because it's good for your brain. Okay. And, and, and we all heard it. And and the one day I thought, why is that? Why did that? Why was that statement out there? So I, I took off the research and it has to do with uh, essential fatty acids. And so we're all told we got to eat fish oil. It's really good for your heart. Well, in fish oil, there's something called EPA. And that's very cardioprotective. But fish oil also has something called DHA, which is very cognitively protective. So when we get in a, a situation where there's any a decline, get on a higher DHA fish oil because the DHA is supports brain health. There's also neurotoxins that exist in this whole toxic situation. Inflammation and uh, um, toxicity 
are, are so intertwined, you can't separate them. And the neurotoxins that exist, uh, aspartame being one, um, uh, artificial sweetener, uh, it's a neurotoxin. Uh, the, the amount, just research on the internet, the number of people that are absolutely normal, and all of a sudden they start drinking diets, uh, they drink a Diet Coke in the morning, at lunch, before bed, during the day, and all of a sudden they have cognitive issues. Look Look at the history of aspartame and how it came. There, there's a book called The 100-Year Lie, I think by a guy named Fitzgerald. And he, and he kind of talks about this increase in uh, the amount of toxins that have been put into our environment. And when you will get angry, violently angry, when you realize what happened in the FDA when um, uh, G.D. Searle is the company that uh, invented aspartame. And it was known to be a neurotoxin that caused brain cancer, all kinds of different things. Known fact. So then the head of the FDA at the time allowed it in a certain area. I believe the guy's name was Hull. I, I could be wrong, but the book, 100 Year Lie, talks about this thing. And he got it in, in, in certain situations, but it just opened the door and the floodgates opened up and now it's in everything. And so this uh, Arthur Hall Hayes was his name. That that that's the guy's name. It just came to me. Okay. Uh, he ended up working for G. D. Searle after he left the FDA. <laughs> just you know, how many Fauci's do we have to have before somebody goes, no, this this is it's time to stop this. You know, I I, I just uh, it makes me absolutely insane. So the neurotoxic aspect combined with inflammation and immunosuppression, and then dysglycemia, you put those together and the, uh, the it equals brain degeneration. And it and that, that doesn't even get into the emotional component of this thing. If I ever wrote another book, which I'm not going to do, but if I did, the book would be, re, I would title it The Emotional Concussion. Because I believe you can concuss the brain emotionally just as if you hit your head on a, on a concrete. Uh, I, I I am I firmly believe this to be the case. Uh, I don't know exact chemistry, but I think if I decided to go through it, I, I could find the exact chemistry behind it. I think we can have an emotional concussion. And today, we who's happy the last two years? Really, I, I, I gave a talk on happiness. Uh, I, it's just I, I get that talk I requested to give that talk frequently, and. You know, our our founding fathers, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. Now, with certain it's among these are health, you know, and the pursuit of happiness. It's the only country in, that I am aware of in the research I did that wants its public to be happy. Are we happy the last two years with the lies that kind of get dumped on us? And what happens when you're not happy? It affects your spleen. You know what your spleen does? It produces B lymphocytes. You know what B lymphocytes do? They fight infections. Do you think there's evil behind it? I'm sorry, I'm gone off cars here <laughs> wow oh my goodness that's like yeah, a whole but, but, other topic i love yeah, that yeah, we, so yeah. true because look at the rise of infections that we have been yeah. having in the last yeah. two and a half years and you're absolutely right with the um isolation that's yep. a whole other um topic there but you just segued perfectly into my next question i had for you because i really wanted to talk about the mood disorders that are just so right. just all around. And so many people are suffering with depression, anxiety, especially um, lately, um, the de right. depression rates, the suicide rates have just quadrupled. And um, then we've just got the regular mood disorders. I say regular because they're getting worse too, but they're sure. more commonplace ADHD, ADD, those kinds of things, but depression, anxiety, all of these mood disorders, how can, because the brain is so affected by our lifestyle and inflammation, the negative inflammation, how can the Shape Reclaimed program help these mood disorders specifically? Yeah, you know, I got lucky with Shape. It just ended up helping everything. And it was nothing short of remarkable. The one area in shape that I realized there was a little bit of weakness was emotional support. I ended up building a, uh, having a product made called Mood Balance, excuse me, Mood Balance. It's basically holy basil leaf, which is an adaptogen. What that means is it'll cause your body to adapt. So if you're anxious, it brings you down. If you're depressed, it brings you up. It also stabilizes blood sugar. It's also good for what's called the HPA axis, your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. This is how we cope with stress. I also put in there rhodiola, uh, rhodiola is an herb. It's a Siberian uh, uh, herb. Um, and it 
it gives people energy. Uh, it, I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of why I chose it, but the complaints people always, the general complaints, yeah, I just don't feel right. I feel kind of off and depressed. I'm anxious. I don't have any energy. Rodeo is for energy. And then I put maca in this thing. And I, I put maca, Peruvian maca, that is harvested at over 11,000 feet because that's, Above that, the maca will make the chemical that you need. Now, maca, if you read about it, it's about sexual health and sexual energy. Well, it's an important part. What is one of the things that happens, male or female, with depression and anxiety? Is libido go south? So I put it in there, not for the libido support, but just to realize that that reproductive energy, that has to do with thoughts. Uh, how how pregnant are your thoughts? You know, uh, and I, I look at cell phones and I truly understand why they're here and you know how wonderful they are, but they've taken away curiosity. How fast right. does a bee fly? Siri, how fast does a bee fly? We don't have to study anymore. Right. Siri can give us the answers. It's 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 not allowing our brains to function the way it should. We're no longer curious because Siri can answer and the bee flies at 30 miles an hour, by the way, because I asked Siri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is which is ridiculous. But the brain is such a complex entity. And it and we do not respect it like we should. We do not exercise our brain anymore. We've gone through our phase where everybody's jogging and all the aerobic and anaerobic and all the different kinds of exercise. But there's never been the emphasis on the brain. And I, I think it, it it's time has come. We have to step back and realize the brain is the key. And we have to realize that there's a difference in us. There, there are things called neurotransmitters. They transmit nerve impulse. We don't have one nerve from our brain to our toe. We have a bunch of short nerves. There's a gap between those nerves called a synapse. And there's a there has to be a transfer of chemical energy from one end to the other. And that's called a neurotransmitter. And the most prolific is acetylcholine. So let's say you suck at math. Well, you got a problem with acetylcholine because math, math requires good acetylcholine levels. And that's one of the questions I ask uh, to the kid that's been ADD. How are you at math? Uh, well, you know, I used to be good, but now I suck. Well, that's a, that's a huge diagnostic entity. And I know acetyl L-carnitine will help support that. That's why people smoke cigarettes, because nicotine is a cholinergic substance. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, it converts to choline, which converts to acetylcholine, which makes you think better. So smoking is, cigarettes are, are more addictive than cocaine. So understanding this brain chemistry is very important. But we've got this, this uh, male-female aspect. Men are governed by a brain chemical called dopamine. There's a joke there. I realize it. Uh, and women are governed by a brain chemical called serotonin. So um, pornography raises dopamine. Driving your car fast is, raises dopamine. Watching cars drive fast. Fighting raises dopamine. Arguing raises dopamine. When you got a kid that's got ADD, it's a lack of dopamine. When you argue with an ADD kid, you're, they like it. They enjoy it. It's raising their dopamine. They feel better when they argue. It's We have to understand the, the, the chemistry behind that. But here's the thing that's interesting. Protecting others raises dopamine. Now, men are ruled by dopamine. Women are ruled by serotonin. Serotonin is our, our feel-better chemical. That's all these SSRIs, mm -hmm. uh, Zoloft, uh, effects or you know, like Prozac, these are all selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But here's the interesting thing. Serving others raises serotonin. Think about the godly nature of that statement. So colonial times, you're sitting on, a, on your porch uh, and you're, uh, you're there with your spouse and your two children and the mother says, oh, isn't that deer in the meadow beautiful? And the kids say, oh, that, mirror is, uh, that deer is so beautiful. And the father looks at it with his dopamine brain and says, it's beautiful, but I got to kill it. We need the food. So there has to be a difference in our brain. And it's this it's this push to make all of our brains the same that is creating a neurotoxic effect. And it's the main reason why letting our children decide what gender they are. Look, I'm a doctor, pull down their pants. I'll give you a quick answer. I'm not trying to be snotty, but allowing this kind of activity to occur is absolutely, um, there. I don't even know the word to describe it. it it's absolutely absurd. 
you know, having litter boxes in schools because some kid identifies as a cat. Well, put it in the middle of the room and say, use it. You know, I mean, we have to stop this. We're trying to make everybody homogenous, everybody the same. And it's not the answer, answer to our problem. We have got to respect the fact that we are different and, and take those differences. Look, I, I'm conservative. I'm traditional. But I'm respectful of a, of a progressive liberal. I think the two can talk together. I live in northern Wisconsin. Uh, and me back in the day, I'd have been totally against snowmobiles. I don't want that noise and that smell in my woods. And yet the progressive and the liberal says, you know, I get that. But look, nothing happens here in the winter, but this could be really good for the businesses. And they compromised. And now it's a huge industry. And, and, and multiple jobs have come because the two groups are able to talk. So I, I respect a progressive liberal approach. I don't respect our government because they're as far as east is from west. And when one says one thing, the opposite says the opposite. Therein lies the problem. They can't, they can't come to some kind of compromise. And that's what, what we have to do in our brain is we have to understand that we've got these polar opposites that are pulling us literally apart. And we domino into depression, anxiety, suicide, whatever it might be, gender, uh, unawareness of what gender we are. Let's get back to understanding the basis behind this, which is brain chemistry, inflammation, dysglycemia, all these things we talked about, which come back to the whole thing. It's all about inflammation in your brain. Let's stop that inflammation. Let the brain heal itself because it can heal. When I was in school in 1970s, if you had a nerve injury, a brain injury, it's done. You're never going to be any better. Well, then all of a sudden they discovered something called neuroplasticity, that the brain can actually regenerate itself. And it's like, well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> and, and so I, I, all of a sudden, the 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 truth became not true. And we now open up the possibility that our brain, brains can, in fact, regenerate. And I believe they can. So for everyone out there that's having problems with their brain, I believe there's something out there that can fix it. Now, what that is, is very complex and how to find it. Is it inflammatory? Is it a, is a neurotoxic? Is it um, a, a lack of nutrition? Is it whatever it might be? Is it a deficiency? Is it an excess? Something's out there that can help it. I agree. There, there's always hope, and that's that's yeah. what I always tell my clients. Like, there's always hope. We give up so quickly, you know, and a lot of it is our our mindset. For one thing, it's yeah. our mindset and how are we going to progress with that? Are we going to just yeah. roll over and admit yep. defeat or are we going to keep fighting and we are going to recognize that, you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made Absolutely. and it is not our creator's <laughs> intent for us to be sad, sick and stuck. So. Absolutely. I, oh, I like that. I might coin that. I might steal that from you. <laughs> sad, you sick. can steal it. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love your, I love your next book title actually. So yeah. Yeah. I think you need to write you know, that. I have so, to, then, I go ahead. Let me, share, let me share one quick story. I know you want to squeeze time wise. So count out something else I said, but so I had this patient. I was a young and brilliant doctor. Now, actually only one of those adjectives was in fact true. <laughs> I was young. Um, I had this little old lady come to me. Her name was Evelyn. And she was in her 80s. And she had some weakness in her legs. And she didn't drive. She came to my office in a bus. And uh, and I, I take very thorough history uh, and with patients. And and uh, I was able to help her. She had some simple problems. I, I was able to help her condition. But in her history, she wrote, in 1964, she had glioblastoma, which is the deadliest form of brain cancer known to man. You're going to die. The survival rate is zero. If you got it, you're going to die. And I said, well, uh, Miss So-and-so, um, I notice here you put down glioblastoma. And I said, uh, it must be a mistake because here you are in the 1980s uh, still alive. And she said, no, no, that's what I had. And uh, so I took a little more history. I went back and I said, no, look, you understand, there truly is no survival rate to this thing. I mean, it, it's a you know deadly form of cancer. Um, I'm sure you've mistaken. And she says, no, no, that's what I had. So now I take more history. I go back a third time. And I said, now, now I go, Evelyn, it's no longer miss. You didn't understand the gravity of the situation. This is an absolutely fatal form of cancer. You obviously did not have this condition. So fess up. <laughs> Where were you on the night with the light in her face on the August? And and so I always would describe her as that white gloves after Easter kind of gal. So she had a little white gloves in her hand and she leaned forward to me and she goes, Sonny. <laughs> 
She said, I'm an educated woman. I've been a librarian all my life. And she said, I got the diagnosis. I researched it. I studied it. And she said, I truly understood the gravity of the situation. And she said, and she said I knelt in prayer and woke up the next morning. And I decided not to participate in the disease. And she died in her sleep in her 90s and of, a, of a fatal form of cancer. And I, from a young doctor standpoint, I went, whoa. Man, what a lesson to learn as a young, brilliant doctor. So hence the brilliant adjective probably wasn't accurate, but I was in fact young. But an absolute power of the human brain to change the course of anything in your life is out there. It, it can be done. She chose not to participate in the most fatal form of brain cancer known to man and died in her 90s, 30 plus years later. Uh, what a incredible story thank you for sharing that that is yeah. incredible and that's hope right there for anybody that listening that is that is the epitome of the hope that you know god has for us and Absolutely. you know it, it's it's all about faith it's all about faith in our creator and um just partnering with him partnering with the lord for whatever ails us it whether it's weight loss whether it's a, a horrible um, yeah. diagnosis you know you partner with the lord and you don't yeah. you don't um agree with it right you agree with the lord you don't agree with yeah. the diagnosis you don't agree with yeah. the fact that you will never be able to change your uh lifestyle you'll never be able to lose weight you'll never ever all those voices that are in our head from probably childhood right i mean it, it makes yeah. such a difference and that's what i love about um, not only the shape drops, which we didn't really talk about this time, we had talked about it before on our last interview, but we did talk about the mood balance. And I'm so glad that you did because there, again, there's hope, you know, if, if you put so many people that are on these SSRIs, um, you know, it's actually depleting the very thing that it's trying to support, right? Like yeah, serotonin, certainly. for example, yeah. you're actually depleting your serotonin levels, Um you know, among other things, it's causing other issues, the mood balance, it's all God given herbs that God put on this earth for us to use for a purpose. Absolutely. Everything that he gave us on this earth is for us to use, it is up to us to figure out how to use it. And you have done that beautifully with the ingredients and the shape drops and in the mood balance. So just all of the, the adaptogens. So you have just done amazing work with the Shape Reclaimed program. And I'm just so uh, grateful to be able to study under you and help just be a part in my small corner of the world of, of helping to change lives using these wonderful herbs and lifestyle restorative medicine, essentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, you know, in my career, my successes were so much greater than my abilities. <laughs> and you got to step back at some point and go, how are these things happening? And and it wasn't because we held hands as a staff and prayed every day. My staff prayed for me for wisdom. They prayed for the patients, for understanding and their ability to make the changes. I, I think it was a huge factor in the success in my clinic. And it was astounding. I, you know, a patient would tell me how much better they are. And I'd, I'd be the doctor and act like I know what I was doing. I'd, I'd walk out of that room and go, Oh, that is so cool. I can't believe that happened. You know, I should have done it in front of the patient. I'm embarrassed to, to and just say, you know, wow, that that's amazing. But what, what can't God do? <laughs> no, right. You know, I mean, right. I, look, look at Christ. He raises Lazarus from the dead. Okay. Now look, I understand physiology. The guy's clinically dead. He's decomposing. Okay. I mean, he is rotting flesh. It's going to stink really bad. After 12 hours, it's going to smell bad. After 24 hours, it's going to unbelievable. So he comes out of the raising Lazarus from the dead and he turns around to his disciples. Okay. All right, guys, this is how you do this. You, you put your left hand to the north, you draw that north energy through, and you and then you put your 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 ring finger on the temple. And no, he didn't he didn't do that. He looks at his disciples and what does he say? He says, Greater things this than this you can do also. He just raised a guy clinically dead. Yeah. <laughs> and then turns to his people and say, You can do greater things than this. I go, I'm in. I'm in. If if that's if that's part of the program, I'm in. I want to be part of that. 
Absolutely. Uh, Matthew 6, 36, I believe, but seek first the kingdom of God and Absolutely. his righteousness and all of other things will be added unto you. And, and that's, that's where I think a lot of us Christians miss the boat, right? We, we, yep. we have stopped seeking first. We are seeking ourselves first. We're seeking the world's way first. And we need to go back to seeking God first and, and his righteousness. There's a line called "You can lead a, you can lead a human to knowledge, but you can't make them think." <laughs> we got to go back to thinking. We got to we, we, look. We took away our curiosity. Let's yeah. become curious again. Yeah. Let's become curious. So when they made Celebrex and Biox, it was a COX two inhibitor. My first thought is, what is COX two? It's a cyclooxygenase enzyme, and it stops stops the progression into prostaglandin two, which is and is inflammatory and immunosuppressive. So the COX-2 inhibitor, the cyclooxygenase enzyme, COX-2, is blocked so we don't trigger the, the in, uh, inflammation and the, the immunosuppression. Well, the problem with those drugs is they also block prostaglandins 1 and 3, which are, pro, uh, which are anti-inflammatory and immunoenhancing. So where you in help one area, you shut down two other areas that are anti-inflammatory and immunoenhancing. That's called side effects, by the way. That's why Viax didn't have as good a press agent and it got taken off the market because it caused heart problems. But Celebrex had a better press agent and it's still on the market. And the same damn drug, excuse me. Mm. <laughs> but my curiosity, what is a COX-2 inhibitor? And I went and looked it up. Not the yeah. public gen isn't going to be desirous of that, but it doesn't have to be that that intense from a scientific standpoint, but look at it from a generality standpoint and just ask your heart. Mm -hmm. Think with your head and your heart. You're going to be a much better human being if you think with your head and your heart. It, it's that simple. That heart energy, spirituality, head energy is knowledge. I, I get that. Um, but knowledge isn't enough. With your heart, you gain wisdom. And with wisdom comes miracles. Absolutely. And you're right. We have taken away the art of curiosity and we have replaced it with just taking at face value as truth you know no no longer researching for ourselves no longer thinking on our own actually i just read this amazing book um, and of course i'm blanking on the title but it was about that specifically it's how we have given up all of our rights to think willingly and the next generation and, you know, the generations to come, like if, if we continue on this path, you know, what is, what is our education going to That's be like? What is our brain going to be like? You know, Here, just, here's what, here's what Siri can't do. It can't come up with a new idea. Right. It can't come up with a new idea. I remember I was lecturing somewhere and somebody made a statement to the fact that, you know, well, you're lucky because you thought this and that's the be all and end all, you know, all the good ideas are taken. And I said to him, really? I said, do you realize we walked on the moon before we put wheels on a suitcase? <laughs> we, we, we sent somebody to the moon and they walked on the moon surface before we put wheels on a suitcase. Come on, people. The good ideas are out there. But don't ask Siri for a new idea because it can't give you one. Only your brain... Yeah and your curiosity can come up with a new idea. And who created the brain? Right? Ah, well, let's- Who let's... created the brain? And so, you know, we have been given these spiritual gifts and if we are not utilizing them, <clears throat> it's, it's to our detriment. But, you know, also the thing is, as Christians, God will find somebody else mm -hmm. to obey him and to use those gifts that he's given. Absolutely. So, well, this has been so fun. So- <laughs> Fun, we once have again. To end again, Michelle. This is wrong. We we shouldn't end. <laughs> I know we could talk for another hour for sure, but um, it has just been such a pleasure, and um, I just am so grateful for your wisdom and your knowledge, and just coming on and talking with me and, and my listeners, and really every single human being on earth can benefit from the shape program with, whether you are looking for mind mind support mental health or inflammation control or weight loss i mean every single person can benefit from the shape reclaimed program that you have created thank you for that it's a very kind thing to say <laughs> i'm watching monk right now because my brother said you remind me of monk and i watch monk and i go this guy's kind of 
OCD and nuts. And I said to my brother, am I OCD and nuts? He said, no, no, no. You just, you just won't ever take no for an answer. And Mug says, I could be wrong, but I'm not. <laughs> so yeah. uh, look, it, it, it was dropped into my lap. It became a national company. My wife and I are equally yoked. We take this thing forward and, and, uh, and we're helping people. And, you know, it's, it's really what's important. And I talked about this the last time we got together. I had a mentor. He, he, he said, you're going to go through three phases as a, as a professional. The first is survival. And, and as a young doctor, you survived. You, you hone your skills. And he said, now the second phase you're going to go through is success. And I remember thinking as a 20-year-old doctor in the audience to this great mentor of mine, um, what's better than success? And he had that that pregnant pause. And he said, you're all thinking, what's better than success? And he says, what's better than success is to be significant. And if you, I've, I've met successful people that were miserable SOBs. I've never met anybody that had significance in his life that was miserable. When you take somebody and through something you did, allow them that they were told they're never going to have a child again, all of a sudden they're pregnant, man, that makes for a good day. You know, and that makes for a good week, a good month, probably a good career. And uh, I've had many of those type of things happen in my career that uh, I, I am at the point now I want I want to teach what my mentor taught. I want I want to teach people to be significant success. Yeah, I've been rich. And I've been poor. I can't say it's better one way or the other I can do more when you're got money. But am I happier with more money? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But. When you're significant, man, that, that's some true joy. And that joy comes to the Lord. Happen, happiness is about happenings. Joy is a spiritual depth of elation. It's just amazing. Be significant. Yeah, it can come down to what do you want your legacy to be, too. Absolutely. You know, yep. and you want it to have impact. So yep. I I think you, you are definitely doing that. And um, again, you. so grateful to study and learn under you. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I know that I will be asking you to come back again because I just love <laughs> I our conversation. I'll be ready and willing, my friend. Good. Well, thank you so much. And I will have all of your contact information listed so that our listeners can find you. But do you have a quick um, anything else you'd like to say before we close? Hey, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Absolutely. Wasn't that great? Don't you just love listening and learning from Dr. Todd? He is such a wealth of information and such an amazing like encyclopedia of all things related to health. So I really hope you enjoyed that. And if you were interested in learning more about how you can reduce the inflammation in your body, that toxic inflammation, and gain energy in a natural way while boosting your immune system and it's really the perfect time to be boosting our immune system, just reach out to me. You can find out more about the Shape Reclaimed Anti-Inflammatory Program on my website, treasuredwellness.com. And for the month of January, I am offering a 30-day gentle cleanse and detox to help you get your body rejuvenated from the holidays. Now, this is the perfect time to get back on track of taking care of yourself if maybe you haven't been with the busyness of the holiday season and to begin helping yourself heal from the inside out. So until January 31st, for the entire month of January, I am offering 23% off my 30-day gentle cleanse and detox with, are you ready for this? an added bonus of a payment plan with no processing fees. But this is just for the month of January, so get on this. You have an entire month. I am keeping this offer open until January 31st, but don't wait until then. Get moving now. Start to give yourself that TLC that you need and deserve, and let's do a 30-day gentle cleanse and detox. So click the link in the show notes now to get started. Let me close out in prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for the wisdom and insight that Dr. Todd brings. Father, we know that as your children, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. So help us to treat our bodies as such and help us to desire to care for our temple the way you would desire for us to care for our temple. Lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that we should go. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I will see you Friday. And remember, you are a beautiful treasure.